for every billion dollars invested in public transit, 36,000 jobs are supported. $3.6 billion in generated in new business, and $500 million is generated in tax revenues. What that means is for every single dollar we invest in transit, we get $4 back. Seems like a pretty good investment. But public transit is hurting all across the country, in cities big and small, from places like Detroit, to the small city of Sandusky in Ohio, and even right here in New York. For most people around the country, public transit is the equivalent of access to opportunity. It dictates where people can go, what kind of jobs they can get, and where they can live, and ultimately, how a city grows altogether. Why does it feel like transit is failing? What if I told you that it wasn't for a lack of trying? because cities and transit agencies all across the country are trying really, really hard. What if I told you that it was because of a lack of the tools that we use to fight for public transit? This is MTA's long range plan. It took many, many months to draft, put together, write, publish, and it runs for about 150 pages. And this is David. David is a planner at the MTA right here downtown at 2 Broadway, and he's probably one of the most hardworking planners I've ever met. And today, it's his job to execute and make those 150 pages a reality. When he wants to plan a new bus route to serve new communities in, the Queens, in Queens, he uses graph paper, ballpoint pen, and an Excel spreadsheet. And this is happening all across the country. It happens in Austin. It happens in Oakland, and it happens in Los Angeles. So what's really happening? What's happening is that great ideas and plans are getting stuck. And they're getting stuck because of the sheer amount of effort that it takes to plan, to get people to understand that plan, and to get people on board. Why is this the case? Well, it doesn't have to be. Let me show you a different way. So these are my co-founders, Dan, Sam, and Danny. And we're a bunch of planners, technologists, transit nerds who got together and started a company uh, to improve public transit and in turn improve access to opportunity. And this is what we built. Because cities are constantly changing, we help planners dynamically and iteratively plan out new transit routes and immediately understand a couple of things. One, how much it costs two, who might ride it, and three, whether or not it's a good investment based on trade-offs. Trade-offs such as cost versus access uh, for low-income and minority populations, and all that data is, is really driving this whole process. And that data is simple, easy to understand, and also beautiful. And what we found is that people need to understand this data in order to understand why these plans are happening. People meaning stakeholders, advocacy groups, community members, elected officials, Mrs. Jones who's lived down the street and has been living there for the last 50 years. Over the past two years, we've been working with over 110 different cities across eight countries around the world. And if there's one thing that we've learned, it's this. If ideas get stuck because not enough people can understand your plan, then when plans are easy to understand, change happens. And we're already seeing it happen. We're seeing change happen in Detroit. We're seeing change happen in the small town of Sandusky, Ohio. And we're even seeing change happen right here in New York. So here's my call to action for all of you government leaders, designers, planners out there in the audience. Make your plan simple, beautiful, and easy for people to understand. Change might just happen. Thank you. <laughs>